Welcome to the most simple and the best easy beginner tutorial for BPMN. So in BPMN, there are a lot of elements, but there are only three which are super important for you as a beginner. The first one are events. The second one are tasks. And the third one are the gateways. Now, let me explain each one for you so you get it quickly and you can model on your own. Events, what is an event? An event is something that happen, happens or occurs. And uh, basically the name of an event is always object plus the past tense. For example, letter received, request received, message sent, call started and so on. I think you get the idea. Important to mention is an event has no duration. It has no duration. It just happens at a point in time. Receiving a letter like letter received that's in a point in time, that's not, an, that's not a duration. How do events actually look like in BPMN? Here on the left, it's a circle. Here are a couple of demonstrations. Here on the left hand side, you can see start events. There are three categories of events. The start events, here you have one circle and these also come in different forms, right? You can have a start event with a message received or a signal received or something else. This here at the bottom is wrong, excuse me. It would be a time, like for example, it's 2 p.m. Then here in the middle, you have intermediate events. So this is an event or something that occurs during a process, not in the beginning and not in the end, in the middle somewhere. And these are twice with a circle here. You have two circles around and this indicates it ha it's happening during the process. And then you have the end events, how a process is ending. And this is just thick marked like here. It's a thick circle. And also here you have different forms. What exactly they mean, we can have a look on later. But for you to important to know, there are three kinds of events, start, intermediate, and end events. Then tasks. So when an event has no duration, what is something that has a duration? And these are exactly the tasks, or some people call them activities. This is something that is performed during a process. So it has a duration greater than zero. This could be something that takes an hour, a minute, or per seconds, or even milliseconds, nanoseconds. And the form for this one is, verb plus object for example call manager write letter conduct review or enter data these are classical activities and they have a duration they take time then here are a couple of examples how could a bpman activity or task look like here for example you have an activity change clothes and in the top left corner here you have a symbol which indicates also the degree of automation this hand symbol means there is no IT system involved. It's totally manual. Then you have, for example, a user task with a user here entering data. So this means it is still manual, but you're using an IT system with this one. So you could imagine entering data in a form is this, or you have an automated task. The symbol is for automated, like the get status, for example, some APIs or a system is making an API call to get a status automatically. This is how you could model it. Then besides the degree of automation, we also have some activities or tasks which perform a sending. Like for example, you could use this activity to send, uh, to receive something. The, the, the white letter here, the white letter here means you're receiving something and the black letter here is sending. Sorry for confusing these two. Letters is always a message. If it's white, you're receiving something. And if it's black, you are sending something. Then you have also the business rule activity here. In this video, I'm not going to explain this more further because this is advanced. And you have even more, but to give you just two examples, you could have a call activity. So you could imagine that somewhere an activity or sub process is already modeled and you can just reuse it this is how you could model it with a black activity border or even with a plus if it's a sub process. So if in this activity, it's a new process itself. This is a wide variety of activities. We're going to use them later. Now let's have a look on gateways. What is a gateway? So now we know events. So something that occurs during the process. Now we have activities, something that is performed during a process. And now we have gateways to help routing within the process. So the, the, what is the name of a gateway? It could be a question, it could be the name of a variable, 
or it could be empty. So what about examples? For example, was the review successful? This could be a gateway. This is a yes or no question or status question mark. So what is the status? Let's say the status is accepted, rejected or whatever in progress. Or we have a Boolean here. This could be a technical variable is accepted. Maybe it's a Boolean with true or false. In the later with the examples, we can see exactly how this looks like, but that's it for now. So which gateways do we have in BPMN? The most famous one, I guess, is the either or gateway. This is if you have a decision either or. Then you have the parallel gateway to make things in parallel. This is especially important if multiple actors should act in, a, in the same time or an IT system is using threats. Then you have the inclusive or. It's different than the exclusive or here, the either or. I'm gonna explain this one later. Then we have the event-based gateway, which is a bit more advanced, and the complex gateway, which is very advanced, which I'm not gonna use to, uh, not recommend to use. Okay, now let's jump into practical examples and let's start modeling a bit so you get the concept. All right, so here we are in the process engine. And as you, as you have noticed, a process always has to start with at least one start event. And also a process has to end with at least one end event. So you can model them right away. Let's make a very simple process, super simple, super basic. For example, you can imagine you have to enter data. That's an activity, you do something, this takes time, it has a duration. That's the first person doing. And then you have an either or gateway, which is routing something. For example, is the amount greater than 100? So when we are entering data, you could imagine a form there is a variable called amount and now the question is, is it greater than 100? If so, we do this here and we end the process. And if it's, so it's yes and no, the alternative could be something totally different. Then we do something else and maybe we do some other activities and then we do go to an end. Uh, this could be, a, a, for example, a, a basic process. So it could be, uh, call this perform API call and if it's something different manipulate data review data archive data something like this and then you can also go go ahead and mark these labels here like entering data that's a user task Let's say perform API call something totally ma automatic. And here you could maybe also use the IT system totally with this. And maybe here it's again a service task. Now we also have to name our end and start events. This could be something totally bizarre. So how could we, could we name this? Let's go here, let's say data archived. This could be an end event or we could have another end event here, which is like amount booked or something, whatever it might be. And what could be the trigger request received? Okay, so this is actually a totally valid BPMN diagram. You see the tasks here, all they have a duration. Let's say entering data needs a minute, perform API call is 0 0.01 seconds. In manipulate data, we take another minute. Review data, we take five minutes. And archive data is again below a second. So this is a basic example for a diagram. What else could we do? Let's let me change things a bit. So we could do the following. For example, we could very briefly do it like this. Let's say we do a parallel gateway like that. And here we go. So what we did now is actually, if the amount is not greater than 100, we manipulate the data and then we have a parallel gateway. So this means everything after this gateway is gonna be performed at the exact same time or let's say in parallel. So let's close this parallel gateway just like this. And here we go. Now this happens or what's gonna happen here Review data and archive data is happening at the same time. It's getting performed at the same time. And only if both are done, we're gonna 
be in this end event right there. As soon as one is still open, we are not gonna proceed here. So that's the trick about this one. What else could we have a look at? Let's make something different. Let's go over here. So when we perform the API call, let's say we want to listen if there is maybe an error message, right? When we do an API call, the other system could give us back an error. So what could happen actually? We use this event-based gateway. The event-based gateway is so to speak a listener. It's listening on events that may occur. Let's say there are two or three possible scenarios. Mm. We could use, for example, let's use this message event and let's say 200 response received. So we are checking the response code. It could be a 200 response code. It could be, let's say here, 400 or 500 or code received. Uh, not code, I mean response received, right? This is an error message or we could have a timeout. That's very popular with the event-based gateway to use a timeout event, that's a time. Let's say 60 seconds passed. So that's the, the, the three options. So when we do this API call, we look, okay, is a 200 code coming back, four or 500, or is maybe a timeout? So 60 seconds and nothing happened. And based on this, we wanna do something. Let's say if there's a 200, it's totally fine. Things are like this. Let's say, in this case, we want to have an error end event, which is throwing an error. And if 60 seconds are passing, we could do, let's say, send email just like this. And uh, if you want to, we can model it like that. And then we can also end this process in some way or form. Let's say process timed out could be the end event. And yeah, this is how you could use the event-based gateway. Let's also give this uh, a name. We don't need it actually. These events are name enough, so to speak. And as you can see, also these events here are intermediate events because they have two circles. Remember the start event has one circle, the end event two, but here we have two circles to show it's an intermediate event. So it's in the middle of the process somewhere. And yeah, now we have also showed this one here. Maybe a last example for the last gateway, the inclusive or which I would like to show. Like if you imagine you have something like this, let me quickly do it. So inclusive or let's say you're entering data again. So enter data. And let's say there are multiple options for this. Let's say there are three. So again, it's about the amount. It's about the amount. So let's say if the amount is greater than 100, we go here. If amount is greater than 50, we go here. And this one is, so to speak, our else. So the default flow, if uh, nothing is. And what could happen now, actually? So this is an inclusive or, it's not an exclusive. The exclusive or here, the X, you could interpret it as an if then else statement. And the inclusive or is an if 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 statement so you have multiple ifs but not that then else which means multiple could be true at the same time so let's assume let me close this gateway quickly so it looks neat and the thing is complete maybe just something like this and there we go that's fine so what is happening here now if you could imagine the amount is let's say it's 1000 what is going to happen if it's 1000, then it's greater than 100 and it's also greater than 50. So actually these two activities like do A, do B and also do C. So these two activities here are getting triggered because 1000 is greater than both. Does this make sense? The activity down here is not triggered because the default flow is not activated, which would be like less 51. And yeah, so if you just model this as an X or exclusive like this, now it would be a problem. Like it wouldn't give an error instantly, but maybe a warning because let's say if it's 1000, then it's checking the first condition, which is here greater than 100. 
and this evaluates to true and then it's not going to check all the other options that's the specialty about the either or it's like doing one by one but if it fits then the others are ignored so in this case this rule would hit and we do perform perform action a but not action b that's the difference between the either or and the inclusive or all right maybe a quick tip for you guys if you're a beginner you have seen how multiple gateways multiple um yeah types of activities or even events what i recommend for the very first models in the beginning just stick with the default activities so don't mark it in a special rule just use this one here use the default start event the default end event and try to use words to describe things you could also use comments like this this is a comment and as you get more intermediate and more yeah, I feel more comfortable about using these modifiers, so to speak, or even the event-based gateway. It's a bit more complex. Usually you use the either or and the parallel. I think that's most of the time it. And uh, if you stick with these elements down here for the first time, for the beginning, you will be good to go.